All right, wanted to do a quick video on how to fill up an oxygen tank using the cascade system. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually make sure that the bottle you wanna fill is turned off with the top valve, and then you're gonna to need to remove the regulator. So go ahead and get that off. Then we're gonna go ahead and come over to the cascade system. You'll see it's got kind of a place to put the bottle. You're gonna put it right in there, and then you're actually gonna put this hose right here on it, just like you had the regulator. So you got the two pins, you're gonna line up the two pins in here just like normal. You're gonna put that down on there and then go ahead and tighten it up. Once that's done, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your bleed valve is shut off. So this valve here needs to be tightened and shut off. Then you can open up this bottle. What that's going to do is whatever residual oxygen you have left in this bottle is going to go ahead and charge this line. Um, you'll see in this case, this bottle is actually fairly full at 1500, um, but if it was less full, you'd just see a lower number. One of the things you could also do is you can look at the dry erase board and kind of get an idea from the last person that filled where we are at for the amount of oxygen. Um, you can see right here, A is got 1,000, B is at 1,600, and C is at 2,000, even though it says 200, it's just missing a zero. Okay, so with this valve open, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up A, and then we're gonna close A, okay? The big key here is never have more than one of these bottles open at any time. So you're gonna open one, close one, open one, close one, open one, close one. Don't ever open one, open one, open one, or you're just gonna equalize this whole system and you're really gonna mess things up. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and uh, open this and normally you'd see this come up to 1,000. In this case, you're actually gonna see it go down to 1,000 because it's actually gonna push oxygen from here back to there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Now you always wanna open these valves slowly. If you open them really fast, you're actually gonna get um, kind of a horrible whining sound. The other thing you're gonna get is you're gonna get frost accumulate on the hose and the bottle itself is gonna heat up pretty extensively. If you're getting any of those signs, so either frost, heat, or really awful sounds, you're going too fast. You need to slow down how quickly you're opening the valve. Once this needle quits moving, then you're done. These two. These two bottles have equalized at that point. Go ahead and record whatever that number is. You can usually find a dry erase marker sitting here in this bin. So uh, today is, I believe the 12th, and we're right at about 1,000 PSI. So every time you do a fill, just go ahead and put a new record up there. If this is fill, filled, go ahead and just erase it and start over on this side. So A is at 1,000. We're gonna shut off A. So make sure A is shut off before you move to B. So now we're gonna slowly open B, and B is gonna get us a little bit more pressure. So that should bring us up to around 1500 or 1600. Yeah, so 1500 there, and it stopped. So we're gonna go and write 1500 up here. We're gonna shut that down. So once again, make sure we shut down B before we open up C. So now we're gonna open up C. And you can see the needles moving. We're gonna go up to about 2,000 here. A brand new tank is at 2,000, so C is pretty much a brand new tank. Then we're gonna go ahead and shut down C. I'm gonna go ahead and write the 2,000 up here. And this is driving me nuts. We'll add an extra zero right there. All right, once you've shut down these three tanks, you can then shut down this tank. So we're gonna to wanna to shut down this valve next. And make sure that's all the way closed. Once that's shut, we still have residual pressure in the hose itself. In that case, we need to bleed out that pressure and that's where this bleed valve kicks in. So we're gonna go and open that up slowly and bleed our pressure down to zero. Okay, once that's down to zero, I like to close the valve just so the next person doesn't have to deal with it being left open. And then you can go ahead and take your bottle off here. Maybe. Then you can go and reapply your regulator like normal. The bottle's full and ready to go back into service at that point. Couple quick notes about the Cascade system. Over time, the Cascade system is gonna get so low that you can't really fully charge a bottle. We consider the bare minimum on bottles in the Amelts to be at 1,000, although we prefer them to be a little higher than that, um, but 1,000 is a bare minimum. So if you get down to where tank C is 
at fairly low pressures, like it's getting down to like 1200 or something like that. This will probably be down getting to like the 300s by that point. Then it's time to rotate the cascade system. What you're actually going to need to do is you're actually going to need to take one of these wrenches and you're going to need to break down all these hoses and take them off. What you're going to do is you're going to pull A out because that's going to be your lowest pressure one and you're going to go ahead and rip that off, rip the tab off and mark that empty and set that aside. Then you're going to need to rotate the system. So tank B will become the new A, tank C will become the new B, and a brand new tank will become tank C. These little tags right here just clip on and off so you can move these to be appropriate. In fact, right now, somebody has these on wrong because we got B in the A position, so somebody didn't actually rotate these. But these should be A, B, and C, and they should always be kept in that order. Um, and I think that's about it.